I'm constantly surprised, dumbfounded, astounded by some of the justifications people try to use to continue to abuse animals. Um, they would never use these justifications in any other context, but as soon as it's to defend their meat-eating habit, their logic goes out the window. There's a fire inside your heart. Let it light up the world. This is essential for traveling, like, you just never know if the country you go to is going to have it, so you've got to bring it with you. This is a travel pack, and this is gold dust. It's 3.40am, we wake up at quarter past three. Footage downloaded. Day two. Oily vegetables. What is it? Um, just an espresso, eh? That is really strong. How does it make you feel? It has to be done on a tour like this, mate. We got this from the 7-Eleven here in Denmark. Vegan options just over here. So you can get them everywhere, which is amazing. This is the city centre, that's a parliament over there. This is the main walk and we've got the guys here doing some leafleting. Um, after this is going to be some fur activism, so. They forget about logic, uh, they contradict their own core values and it surprises me because these are good people in every other aspect of their lives but when it comes to um, eating flesh of animals who've been murdered, they seem to try to justify it with ridiculous, ridiculous responses that I don't even think they truly believe. Most people believe animals deserve moral treatment, but people don't act in a way that supports that belief. What would you uh, wish that um, someone had told you before you went vegan? Oh, you know, I wish I had a conversation with me now. I would appreciate if someone was just straight with me and said it how it is, without trying to fluff it up, just directly tell me what is going on. What am I contributing to? I think we fall into this trap of trying to make people feel too comfortable and people shouldn't feel comfortable about this. You can be respectful, but direct and honest about what's happening to animals and that's how I speak. And I wish that someone like me had a conversation with me 10 years ago about this. Here in Denmark, apparently they are such big exporters and um, they have a big fur factory here, uh, which is why they target fur a lot more, which I think is a good idea. I, I rarely do any fur advocacy um, because just simply I'm not never in areas where fur is predominantly used. But if I ever advocate against wearing skin, I usually talk about all skin, leather, wool, down, um, fur. I don't think one is morally worse than the other. Wearing animal skin is really sick. But for fur, uh, usually they anally electrocute the animals. So you might see images of foxes being skinned alive or mink being skinned alive. Really disgusting, cruel torture. What makes it even more sick is it's for fashion. Like, it's just basically a fashion statement to wear fur. That's it. They're actually, there's a fur shop just down the street from this fur demonstration. And look at the name of the shop. It's actually called Royal Skin. Is this from a real animal? I think so. You think the animal was killed for this? Well, they like it. Tortured and killed, do you think? I think so. Skinned I alive, think. I think they are for fur. Yeah. Yeah. Murdered. Murdered animal. Okay, for no. Torn off a tortured animal's body. Are you serious? They got vegan hot dogs. Are you counting my calories for me? <laughs> Who's counting my calories? 
Hello. This a vegan one? They sell vegan hot dogs at these little hot dog stands in Denmark. Let's try it. It's absolutely amazing. That's one of the best hot dogs I've ever tasted. No one was killed. Murder free. Hello, how are you? We're upstairs, is it? There's a new wave online, if you haven't noticed, which echoes the true core principle of veganism, which is the abolition of animal exploitation. Wow. And I'll say, okay, take the animals out of there, put yourself in the animal's position. Would you accept that? Would you accept that for a family member? Your companion animal? Okay, a double standard, a double standard. No matter how humane you murder someone, it's still murder. You should be uncomfortable because in the face of what's happening to animals, I believe it is an obligation to be active. I think it was, uh, it, to me it felt kind of uh, magical because uh, you just addressed exactly what I think our movement at this time, time needs. Yeah, oh. needs. What's that? You just uh, inspired me so much. Really? Yeah, yeah my, my heart is pumping right now. Just, wow. Just... Take that fire, take it out there, do something with it. And what you should do is align your actions with your own moral belief that you hold towards animals already. And that is what a vegan is. Yeah. I'm really grateful for what you do. And Thanks, man. Of, of course, we all are. We uh, really appreciate it. Thanks, brother. Yeah. Keep no going, problem. Mate. Yeah, man, you too. Don't give up. Yeah, man, you too. It's, it's more important for you because you inspire many more people. You have so, yeah. so much reach. So could you. Yeah, of course, but you have like your YouTube channel and Instagram and all. So, uh, so it all started somewhere. See you later. <laughs> Absolutely epic. Thank you so much. No problems at all. Thanks for, uh, for inspiring me so much, man. I, I really, really appreciate it because I just quit my job so I can do more activism. And, like, <laughs> You're a legend. Yeah, yeah, I mean... <laughs> Let's go get one hour's sleep and <laughs> wake up and go do it all again. I don't want to fucking work five days a week when uh, I hate the job and I can work like uh, with activism, which, which is so much more rewarding. rewarding uh, yeah, and you only live once, man. Yeah, you want to follow sure. your passion. I mean, yeah, for sure. That was pretty intense. The reactions after it have been really powerful here in Europe, man. I know, like, it was really, really emotional, eh? Hey? Thanks so much. Take good care of yourself, okay? I will. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> like, I was, almost thought I was starting to get desensitized to, um, you know, just people coming up to me after speeches, but it's really like, Especially tonight was really um, emotional for me, and, and especially that last guy who spoke to me. Um, yeah, really inspiring speech as well. I think there's a few maybe here that didn't do that much activism that you really inspire. So it's been great. I mean, really appreciate it. It's a tough ride, like doing this, but like when you do stuff like that and you get people so supportive and grateful, and that you've really affected their affected their life in a profound way and they express their gratitude for it. It's I don't it's no better feeling than that and people luck, like you you really life. like um, I don't think you get enough credit for how, how important you are for the vegan movement. To bring uh, the, the greatest justice move, movement in this world and you're really uh, really like the loudest speakers for the animals which don't have a voice so. and when you think about all the animals they help as a result of your influence and the impact that they make in other people's lives because they found your youtube channel or because they heard your speech it's just i don't know it's crazy just yeah, cheers to brother hey, yeah. listen, man. no Thanks. problem Animals are struggling right now, gargling on their own blood. Stop, 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 stop! Being chopped up into pieces. So people can have ham with their eggs in the morning. I wonder how that doesn't disturb people. In terms of transitioning farmers to vegan farms, it's quite pointless because if one farm transforms his farm to vegan, yeah. 
the next farmer who has animal farms will have double the business because the demand still exists. So it's irrelevant what farmers do and what they think. Um, what is relevant is what the public thinks, the consumer thinks. The farming is a symptom of the demand, okay? So you don't go out and change the symptom, you deal with the cause, which is consumers.